do you do any fasting and what's, what do you look at in terms of your diet? Yeah. So if, if we take, if we talk about fasting, first of all, so mm -hmm. the, the excitement around intermittent fasting came from the mice data because there, there's some mice data showing that if you fast the mice for 16 hours in the day and only let them eat for eight hours in the day, um, they seem to have improved lifespan and other um, health span markers compared to mice who could just eat as much as they wanted. And these mice were eating the same amount of calories in the day. So, so that was quite exciting because it looked like if you could just eat within a small window in the day, that humans could also get those amazing benefits. But in the human data, that doesn't seem to be the case. In the trials that actually control for calories, so both groups are eating the same amount of calories, there doesn't seem to be a benefit um, of time-restricted feeding um, or eating within a small window in the day. And there's some very good reasons for that. A mice fasting or a mouse fasting for 16 hours is vastly different to a human fasting for 16 hours. It's roughly the equivalent of about a human fasting for four days, something like that. So it's no wonder, I think, that the human data hasn't shown any benefits to time-restricted feeding, again, when the calories are controlled. There's possibly a benefit for prolonged fasts. So the, the liver, it holds onto our glucose stores or our sugar stores, and it releases them when we don't have food on board. But it, that, that only lasts up to about 48 hours. So it seems that once you burn through your glycogen stores in your liver, um, then you act, then you, your body has to get energy from elsewhere and it, it's forced to activate autophagy, which we've talked about before. So clearing away old cell components so that you've actually got the energy to, for, for the cell to continue living. So I'm, I personally practice between five to seven day fasts, roughly every three months. And while I'm fasting, I make sure to take a multivitamin, um, including potassium, um, and also take a, a salt uh, tablet as well to make sure that my salt levels are fine. And I also do some gentle um, weight training during this because I want to make sure that I'm holding on to as much muscle as I can during that fasting process. And again, I'm fasting not to lose weight. It's simply to try and activate autophagy. Um, so, so those are kind of my thoughts around fasting. So during your fast, did you drink coffee, tea? Uh, yeah, I, I drink black. I, I drink black tea and coffee, um, but that's it. it. So it's it's not a water fast. I <laughs> I am very very skeptical and wary about water fast because they you know not having water for five to seven days is incredibly dangerous, and I would not advise anyone to do that. So yeah, I, I definitely still drink fluid during my fasts. Right. So drinking fluid, but but also coffee because some people say, well, you know, water only. Otherwise. But uh, yeah, no, no, that makes well, there, sense. There's, there's no, there's no calories really, and and so with yeah. the coffee, this it's just it's black coffee. There's no milk. Yeah. There's no sugar. It's it's simply just black coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's interesting because we were listening to Dr. Gundry, you know, Dr. Stephen Gundry. Yeah, he said he switched to doing one meal a day now because the human data is so compelling. But I, I haven't gone and looked up where that came from, but. <laughs> But he, so he I, I, th I think, I think this is um, again one of the reasons why I started my channel because it, it does not matter what my opinion is or what someone else's opinions are. It simply matters what the data shows, and that's why I talk about the evidence pyramid. So, the the evidence pyramid right at the bottom is clinical experience, as in what what do I see as a doctor with my patient sitting in front of me? That's the lowest form of evidence. Then you've got the randomized controlled trials above that. And then you've got the meta-analyses, which are the combination of those randomized controlled trials. And there's a particular framework for how to actually combine randomized clinical trials. And it was developed by an organization called Cochrane. So Cochrane is, is sort of sitting right at the top of the evidence pyramid. And when, when they reviewed all of the human data, this was at the beginning of 2021 in January, they showed that there was, when you control for calories, that there was no benefit in terms of weight loss or cardiovascular disease or blood sugar control um, with time-restricted feeding compared to you know, feeding whenever you want, as so long as you're controlling for the calories. So that, that's, 
that's the best data that that I'm aware of around intermittent fasting. So it again does not matter what my opinions are, does not matter what anyone else's opinions are, it's what the data shows and what the human data shows. And so that's at the top of the evidence pyramid. So, so that's personally what I go for. I should I should find out where Dr. Gundry got his opinion from. But ju- but just just be aware that the that there are some papers with titles that say you know something along the lines of intermittent fasting did x y and z benefit but when you go and when you actually have a look at how they did those trials often they're not uh they're not adjusting for calories so often in the time restricted feeding groups um they're eating less calories and and that's the reason why you see the benefit it's not because of the time restricted feeding it's because they're eating less calories right and in some ways that's why that's how i use intermittent fasting is as a way to control my calories because it it's easier. You can't just can't eat that much for dinner, right? Yeah. So if 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 people want to use it as a as a way to reduce the calorie intake, yes. But but if if again if if you if you're trying to eat the same amount of calories in, in the day and hoping for health span benefits by eating within that small window, unfortunately that doesn't look to be the case. If if you do want to have benefits, if we are going to see benefits of fasting it makes sense to do prolonged fasting, which is difficult. What, what metrics for yourself do you track? Um, I mean, do you get your blood work done? Like how often do you like check your body fat percent? Yeah. So I, I think this, this harks back to what, what we were talking about initially with cholesterol um, mm. and, and particular and, and ordering specific tests um, where, where we'll actually change what I do. So the things that I will always do, no matter what a test tells me, is I want to make sure that I'm not eating too many calories, that I'm eating a wide and varied diet, that I'm sleeping well, exercising, etc. No blood test is going to change that. So mm. in terms of the metrics that I measure, to be honest, it's just how I'm feeling. There's, I'm only 30 years old, so there's no other metric really that, that, I need to, um, that I need to do. I had my blood work done about two years ago just to make sure that as a screening to make sure that my cholesterol wasn't way off and that my um, HbA1c was okay and that my kidneys were fine and and that's it um, for, for someone but but for, for my patients who are getting a little bit older then it's a different story um, then I want to know it, it's the blood work that we talked about before so I'd want their full blood count their use and ease to check their kidneys I'd want their cholesterol I'd want the HbA1c um as a general screening tool as well as all of the other active prevention programs that we're doing um and 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 that that's kind of it i think it is very easy to become inundated with different tests and different this and different that but really it it boils down to a great diet regular exercise and and doing the basics well yes yeah no i i definitely get that so uh, thank you very much for joining us today. So can you tell people where they can find more about you and, and what you're doing and kind of follow your work? Yeah, so if you search into YouTube, just Dr. Brad Stanfield. Um, so I'm based here in New Zealand, Auckland. So my full-time job is working at the clinic, seeing patients every day um, and, and trying to improve their health. And then you know, early in the morning, I'm producing these YouTube videos. Um, so, so that's probably the best way to find me. Um, and again, I've, I've got links to, you know, the supplements that I personally take um, in each of my videos. Um, and I've, I've got the links to the, to the fundraiser for my rapamycin clinical trial um, and Patreon as well. Right. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. I think it's, it's really good because you're, you're actually working in a clinic at the, like an active doctor at the moment. Um, and so you, you can bring that experience to, to your channel and to the, the anti-aging and that's, that's really useful. Yeah, thanks.